Hi, this is Lyndon from Monsoon Youth, and today I'd like to talk a little bit about computers. This is going to be a series of three videos where we take a look at the insides of a computer, a laptop, and a smartphone to see how they're not as different as you might think. I don't want you to feel overwhelmed at any point, so I'm going to compare all of the different parts to our own human body. That way it might be a little bit easier to remember. As I talk about the different pieces we have today, you're going to see some footage of me taking those pieces out of a large computer case. Taking computers apart and putting them back together is a lot easier than you might expect, and I hope that by the end of the series, you'll have a better understanding of the technology that you're holding in your hands, and maybe someday you'll be able to build or repair a computer all by yourself. So without giving too much away, let's get into it. We're going to start with our desktop computer, which is the largest of the three. This is the kind of computer that you keep next to a desk so that uh, you can sit in like a roll-in chair and maybe do some office work. The first piece we're going to talk about is the computer case, which is what holds everything inside. I'm going to give you three seconds to think about what part of the human body holds everything inside. That's right, it's the skeleton. The case is the skeleton of our computer. And the first item in our skeleton is going to be the central processing unit, or better known as the CPU. Now, this piece does all of the thinking for our computer. It tells the parts what they need to be doing, like accessing uh, the computer's memories and getting its muscles to move, and it does all of this in an instant. So all of that put together must mean that the CPU is the brain of our computer. The computer's brain is actually working so hard from the moment that you turn it on that it heats up to temperatures beyond 230 degrees Fahrenheit within five seconds. All of that heat has to be dealt with somehow, so all computers have some sort of cooling solution to deal with that. Our desktop computer uses a large fan with copper pipes and a piece of metal made out of aluminum to keep the CPU super cool. Now, aluminum and copper are actually great for soaking up heat, but they are useless in our computer without a special type of glue that's made to transfer the heat from one metal to the other. Uh, the most important thing to remember is that the CPU is very important to computers, just like how our brain is an important part of our body. Now that we have our skeleton and our brain, let's move on to the muscles. The muscles of our computer are called the Graphics Processing Unit, or the GPU. That means playing games like Fortnite, Roblox, Minecraft, and even smaller things like watching YouTube or just looking up websites. Without the muscles, the computer can't even use a screen to tell you what it's thinking about. That's how important the muscles are to not only our body, but also our computer. After the GPU comes the motherboard. The motherboard is the piece that everything plugs into. And you can see it right here in this little clip. Without it, the brain wouldn't be able to tell the hand that it needs to move, and it couldn't tell the mouth to speak. There would be no way for the parts to communicate with each other. That means that its closest relationship to the human body is the nervous system. Just like our nervous system, the motherboard is what sends signals to all of the parts in our computer. The nervous system can tell the brain the temperature of each piece, or the brain can tell the muscle that it wants to play Roblox, and the muscles can tell the heart that it needs more power. Just like everything else in our computer, it would be useless without all of the other parts. So far, we've made it through four of our seven pieces of our computer, and that's over half weight, so hang in there just a little bit longer. Now that we have our skeleton, brain, muscles, and nervous system, let's talk about the heart of the computer, which is known as the power supply unit, or the PSU for short. This provides power to absolutely everything in our computer. It plugs into the wall and can use a lot of power or a little bit of power depending on what the motherboard is saying it needs, the motherboard being our nervous system. If the brain is working overtime and needs more power to stay cool and keep working hard, the power supply unit can send electricity over to the fans and the CPU to give them more power to work with. But just like how a child's heart is different from an adult's heart, PSUs can only provide so much power depending on what the computer can handle. So if a computer requires more power than the heart can handle, it actually gets too tired and it shuts down immediately. The final pieces in our computer have to do with memory. A computer's memory is actually a lot like our own, and it can be separated into two different categories, short-term memory and long-term memory. The short-term memory is called random access memory, or RAM. RAM is good for little pieces of information that only need to be kept temporarily, or for like a very short period of time. Uh, as an example from your real life, 
Let's imagine that we need to quickly call somebody with our phone. We might try to quickly remember the phone number while we dial it in, or we'll write it down on a small piece of paper and to save it for a moment. After we make the phone call, it's not really important to us anymore. So we forget the number entirely and maybe we throw away our little piece of scrap paper and it's officially been forgotten. That's how RAM works. Maybe we are on the internet and we're browsing Facebook while we're watching a YouTube video. The computer knows where we are on our Facebook feed and on our YouTube page because it's storing it in the RAM, the short-term memory. As soon as we hit that X button and close Facebook and YouTube, that memory is tossed into the garbage and forgotten. However, just because the computer forgets where we are on Facebook, that doesn't mean that it has to forget who we are on Facebook. If we save our password and our username, that stuff is stored in the computer's long-term memory. Long-term memory is the hard disk drive, or the HDD. It actually has a few other names depending on how fast it is, but for this example, we're going to refer to it as the HDD. So back to our short-term memory example, that phone number we called wasn't really needed in the long term because we can always find it again, but we can't remember how to find it if we don't remember the person's name. So we see this person often and we want to call them again uh, to order food. This person's name is McDonald's. Since I'm going to want to call this person back many times to order food, I'm going to make sure that I remember McDonald's name and store it in my long-term memory. That's exactly what the hard disk drive is for. If you're typing out a research paper and need to take a break, you're going to save it onto the HDD so that you can open it again hours, days, and even months later and maybe someday send it in for a grade. All right, that's everything for this video. We've talked about a computer's skeleton, brain, muscles, nervous system, heart, short-term memory, and long-term memory. That's a ton of stuff for you to remember. I don't expect you to remember it all at once. I'm just hoping you have a very general idea of the basics because what we're going to do next is we're going to take apart a laptop in the next video and we're going to take apart a smartphone in the one after that. And in both of those videos, we're going to find the exact same seven pieces in each of those devices. So over time, hopefully you'll end up remembering this all in your long-term memory. So be sure to join me in the next video as we explore some more technology. See you soon.